Welcome to part three of Let's Play Crypt of the Sorcerer by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was about to read paragraph 292. Here we go. You ride over the top of the hill again and down the other side. At the bottom, you can see a small wood at the end of the valley to the north. If you wish to ride towards the wood, turn to 203. If you would rather ride up the next hill, turn to 280. Okay, we're going to ride towards the wood and turn to 203. You trot between tall, gnarled trees in the thick undergrowth. It is dark and eerie in the wood, with what little light there is outside virtually shut out by the crowded treetops. You pull your horse to a halt and have a strong feeling that you are being watched. Keeping a constant watch all around you, you urge your horse to walk on. Turn to 365. As you ride slowly through the wood, uh, you see the leaves of a bush move and cannot convince yourself that it was ruffled by the wind. You draw your sword and turn your horse towards the bush. A hideous creature suddenly leaps out and stares at you through sunken eyes as dark as the earth itself. Uh, the creature is humanoid in shape but with dark crusty skin like bark covered in moss and fungus and crawling with bloated insects. It has a lifeless expression on its crumpled face. Suddenly, the blood demon, no, not blood, sorry. Suddenly, the wood demon's arms uncurl and extend like long vines and try to pull you from your horse. Roll two dice. If the total is the same as or less than your skill score, turn to 232. If the total is greater than your skill score, turn to 297. Yeah, I thought that said blood for a second because it's sort of distorted by the, the curvature of the page there. Um, when it was scanned. Anyway, there's the uh, the wood demon. Okay, let's test our skill. So our current skill is 11. So where we need this dice roll to be 11 or lower, which it was good. Okay, so same as or less than your skill score, turn to 232, off we go. You fend off the arms with your sword and then lunge forward to attack the demon of the woods. Wood demon, skill 9, stamina 10. If you win, turn to 89. Okay, wood demon 9, 10. Um... Need some more uh, encounter things. Okay, that'll do. Okay, wood demon. Nine. And ten. Okay, off we go. My skill is eleven. Uh, and my stamina is eleven. So, off we go. Okay, so 9 plus 7 is 16, I get 15, whoopee. So 16 to 15, brilliant, what a good start. Not going to use any luck there because I'm uh, running a little bit low on it. Um, okay. Okay, nine plus six is fifth. No, sorry, fourteen. No, it's not. What am I saying? Nine plus six is fifteen. Can't even add these days. Nine plus six is fifteen, and I get eighteen. So fifteen to eighteen. Okay, puts them down to eight. Okay, nine plus six is fifteen. I get nineteen. Fifteen to nineteen. It's into six. Okay. Nine plus two is eleven. I get twenty. Eleven to twenty. Four. Okay. Nine plus seven is sixteen. I get fifteen again. Brilliant. Sixteen to fifteen. 
Um, that old chestnut again. Whoops, it's 15. No. Nope. And again, done it again. All right, so that puts me down. Um, puts me down to seven stamina. My, this is a diff uh, difficult book, isn't it? Nine plus six is fifteen. I get twenty-two. So fifteen to twenty-two. And nine plus uh, eleven is. Um, Nine plus eleven is twenty, um, and I get twenty-one. That was very close. So twenty to twenty-one. Can't seem to add quickly these days. Okay, that puts him down to naught, and Mr. Wood Demon is dead. That's the end of him. Let's remove any fuzzing, should there be any, and let's carry on. Uh, what I will do though is use a tot of. Um, healing potion so I'll say two use now and four stamina points that gives me so I'll put that up to 11 there we go okay off we go um, if you win turn to 89 which I did so off we go if you wish to tie your horse up to a tree and trudge through the, th through the thick undergrowth to find the demon's lair, turn to 319. If you would rather ride out of the wood as quickly as possible, turn to 168. Okay, we're going to try and find the uh, the demon's lair, and so we're turning to 319. Okay, you spend some minutes cutting your way through the bushes and brambles, but fail to find a lair. Uh, perhaps the demon had no resting place. You have just decided to give up and return to your horse when something catches your eye in a pile of leaves. You brush away the leaves with your sword and discover the skeletal remains of a human wearing chainmail armour, no doubt a victim of the wood demon. You see that the bony fingers of its right hand are clutching a silver rod, which is about um, one and a half feet in length. A fine helmet lies next to the skull, and a perished leather backpack is close by. Will you? Um, yeah, I often notice that the Ian Livingstone authored ones tend to use the metric system, um, and also he tends to say dice when he means die. Um, yeah, and there are other s uh, small things as well. Anyway. Um, Will you examine the silver rod, turn to 360, try on the helmet, turn to 111, um, open the backpack, turn to 175, or leave the body and return to your horse, turn to 221. Okay, we are going to examine the silver rod and turn to 360. Now the rod is hollow at one end and has a screw thread inside it. You deduce that there is another part of the rod which is either lost or destroyed. You notice the number 37 etched into the solid end of the rod, but do not understand its significance. Okay, so I'll just write that down, or rather type that down. Silver rod. Um, what was it? 37, that's right. Okay. Okay. Um, you put the rod into your backpack before deciding what to do next. If you have not done so, if you have not done so already, you may either try on the helmet, turn to 111, or open the backpack, turn to 175. If you'd rather return to your horse, turn to 221. Okay, we're going to open the backpack uh, and turn to 175. Now, the backpack contains four gold pieces, a candle, and a rolled-up parchment scroll. Uh, you place the gold and the candle in your backpack and look down inside the tubular scroll. Okay, so we have four gold pieces, that's up to 16, and we have a candle. Um <clears throat> You see that there is writing on it. If you wish to open the scroll and read the writing, turn to 268. If you would rather leave the scroll where it is, you may, if you have not done so already, either examine the rod, turn to 260, or try on the helmet, turn to 211. If you would rather return to your horse, turn to 221. Okay, we're going to open the scroll and turn to 268. 
Uh, the scroll relates to, uh, the scroll relates the tale of the fabled Gargantis beast and its miraculous horn. Although there is no absolute proof that the creature exists, rumours about it have been circulating for centuries. It is said to have a lumpy green hide and looks like a cross between a pit fiend and a flesh golem, um, but with the addition of a single horn in the centre of its forehead. Uh, the Gargantus's horn is said to possess many magical and mysterious powers, which it would re re retain even. Uh, sorry, it's a bit blurry there. Which it would retain even if severed from the Gargantus's head. Anyone in possession of the horn, upon wielding it, would release these powers. You have heard of this beast, but are amazed to read on the scroll that one such creature is purported to dwell in the howling tunnels of the western flatlands. Uh, perhaps the poor adventurer who owned the scroll was on his way to um, was on his way to the flatlands when he met an untimely death in the woods. You put the scroll in your backpack and consider what to do next. If you have not done so already, you may either examine the rod, ten to two hundred and sixty, or try on the helmet, ten to one hundred and eleven. If you'd rather return to your horse, ten to two hundred twenty one. Okay, so Gargantus resides in the howling tunnels on the western flatlands. Let's write that down. So Gargantis resides in the Howling, Howling Mad Murdoch, Howling Tunnels on the Western Flatlands. Whoops, Flatlands, there we go. Okay, um... Howling Tunnels of the Western Flatlands, my apologies, I've put off. There we go. Okie dokie, so what are we going to do now? We are now going to return to our horse uh, and turn to 221. We're, we're not going to try on the helmet because it's probably nasty. Okay. Much to your relief, your horse is still tied up to the tree and appears to be contentedly munching the grass. You waste no more time. Mount your horse and set off once again. Turn to 168. Um, ever watchful for hidden attackers, you ride slowly through the wood. You soon come to the edge of a small clearing where the ground is covered with globe-like fungi which are deep purple in colour. If you wish to ride through the fungi, turn to 337. If you would rather ride around the, around the edge of the clearing, turn to 302. Okay, we're going to ride around the edge of the clearing and turn to 302. After riding around the clearing, you notice with relief that at last the trees are beginning to thin and soon you are out of the wood, turn to 194. You soon reach some tree-covered hills. You decide not to take the risk of being ambushed and, and you turn your horse right to head east once again, turn to 252. Now the rest of the day passes without incident and without sight of the lost lake either. In the fading light, you choose a suitable place to camp down for the night, making sure that your horse is securely tethered to a nearby tree. Uh, you settle down to sleep, but are awoken in the middle of the night by a howling cry. Your eyes open to see a full moon, and in an instant you are standing sword in hand. You are standing sword in hand. You feel your heart beating fast as you strain your eyes and ears. Suddenly you hear the sound of a twig snapping and then a low growl. You see a shadow move, and in the dim light recognise the thick brown hair, long fangs, and uh, bestial features of a werewolf. Yes, yeah, so I had a funny feeling it was a werewolf as soon as it said um, full moon, even though I have done this book already. Anyway, um, if you are wearing a moon ring and know how to use it, turn to the number stated in the spell. If you are unable to do this, you must fight the werewolf with your sword. Werewolf, skill 8, stamina 9. If you win but suffer any wounds at all from the werewolf, 10 to 275. If you win without being bitten by the werewolf, 10 to 36. Okay. Werewolf 8, 9. Off we go. Okay. 
Okay, so my skill is 11. Off we go. Right, 8 plus 4 is 12. I get 16. 12 to 16. I thought we needed a silver bullet to, uh, to kill a werewolf. I don't know. Anyway, um, 8 plus 9 is 17. I get 20. 17 to 20. Down to 5. Right. Uh, 8 plus 5 is 13. I get 20. 13 to 20. Down to three. Uh, eight plus five is thirteen. I get twenty one. Down to one. Whoops. Actually, write in uh, one or type in one, sorry. Um, eight plus ten is eighteen. I get fourteen. There we go. Knew it would happen. Eighteen to fourteen. I knew I was being very lucky with the dice rolls. Right. Whoops, that did not mean to do that. Um, I haven't won. It's hurt me. Right, it's down to nine. Uh, for my stamina, that is. All right. Um, eight plus nine is 17. I get 17. So 17 all. Okay. Eight plus... 11 is 19, I get 16, 19 to 16. All of a sudden, things have taken a turn for the worst. Um, now the seven. Right, eight plus seven is 15, I get 19, 15 to 19. Down to one. I mean, naught rather. Right, let's end the werewolf. Now, it did hurt me. Let me just remove the buzzing. So, if there is any. And if you win but suffer any wounds at all from the werewolf, turn to 275. Right, 275, we have to go. Yeah, if you win, good. 275. Um, the wretched humans who are afflicted by lycanthropy are forced to turn into savage werewolves when the, um, when the full moon rises. Anyone bitten by a werewolf is likely to turn into one himself or herself. If you are wearing a crystal of sanity, you will be immune to the disease. 10 to 36. Do I have this crystal of sanity? Crystal of sanity talisman. Yep. Yeah. Good. Um, you will be immune to the disease, 10 to 36. Otherwise, if you have a candle, turn to 91. If you have neither the crystal nor the candle, turn to 317. Okay, we do have the crystal of sanity, so, to, so we're turning to 36. Unable to sleep properly again, you spend a restless night thinking about the task ahead. As soon as it is light enough to see, you mount your horse and set off east once again. You climb the highest hill in order to get a better view and can hardly believe your eyes. A lake no more than two hours' ride away lies in a valley to the southeast. With new heart and determination, you spur your horse towards it. Turn to 178. What a surprise! It's another battle. Classic Livingstone. Um, despite the dark sky, you notice a shadow travel swiftly across your path. You look up and see a winged creature with an eagle-like head and the body of a lion sweeping down to attack you. The creature has a bridle around its head, which is held by the rider, a wild-looking girl wearing animal skins. The barbarian girl has a griffin as her steed, an aggressive but loyal creature. Griffin. Skill 10, stamina 10. If you win, turn to 230. Okay, there's the... Um... Uh, there's the uh, there's the picture. So Griffin ten ten. Off we go. Right, my skill is eleven. Off we go. Ten plus eight is eighteen. I get twenty three. So eighteen to twenty three. Down to eight. 
Okay, 10 plus 10 is 20. I get 18, so 20 to 18. And it puts me down to, to 5 stamina. It really is a very difficult book, this. Okay, 10 plus um, 5 is 15. I get 18. 15 to 18. Whoops. 15 to 18. Down to 6. Okay, 10 plus 6 is 16. I get 19. So 16 to 19. Down to 4. Okay, 10 plus 7 is 17, I get 16. So 17 to 16. Puts me down to 3. Near death. This is a near death experience, not literally of course. Um, 10 plus um, 8 is 18, I get 16. So 18 to 16. Puts me down to 1. Oops. Uh, yep. Right. Um, uh, sixteen to twenty-two. Sixteen to twenty-two. Right, it's down to two. All right. This is like a almost like a Mexican standoff, isn't it? It's like either he is going to either he's going to win or I'm going to win. Uh, 10 plus 5 is 15, I get 21. So 15 to 21, there we go. And I win. Whoops. Alright, that's that. Down to naught. Let's use um, two tots of the uh, liquid, whatever it is, to put me up to 9 stamina. And then start a new line. Um, if you win, turn to 230. I did just, if I had have lost, I just would have had to just pretended that never happened and just started the battle again with the original stamina that I had. That's what, that's what I would have done. I have no choice. Um, I'm not starting the book again. I want to show you the end. It's just, effectively, uh, the dice rolls are just luck. So, they're all luck. So, you know, either I'm going to be lucky or I'm not, really. Anyway, um... Here's 230. In its death throes, the griffin soars up into the sky before plummeting to the ground like a stone some 200 yards away. You do not see the barbarian girl get up from the ground and assume that she is either injured or dead. If you wish to ride over to investigate, turn to 258. If you would rather ride towards the lake, turn to 29. Okay, we're going to ride over and investigate and turn to 358. Uh, yes, I'm going to give this barbarian girl what for. How dare you attack me and nearly kill me. Um, the girl lies in a contorted heap close to her griffin. There is no sign of life and you wonder why she attacked you. Perhaps the griffin was hungry and intended to eat horse flesh. The girl was armed with a sword and a shield. If, you're not, if you do not have a sword, you may take the girls. Add two skill points. Now, the shield is circular and has strange writing etched around the circumference. Um, I do have a sword, so that's that. If you wish, if you wish to take the shield, turn to 131. If you'd rather ride off without, um, ride off without it, turn to 29. Okay, we're going to take the shield and turn to 131. You are in possession of a magical shield which dates back some 200 years. It has the unusual unusual ability to defend its carrier from magically cast lightning bolts. It does, not, uh, it does of course, defend against sharpened blades too. Uh, named the Defender by its maker, it is certainly one of the finest shields in all Alansia. Add one skill point and one luck point. You sling it over your shoulder and ride off towards the lake, 10 to 29. Okay, so our skill is back to 12, that's good. And we also get another luck point, so that's good as well. Okay, um, and we have um, a Defender, Defender Shield, and I'll just type in um, Defends from Magically Cast, whoops, Cat, 
cast uh, lightning bolts. Yes, um, lightning is the sort of word that people think is spelt lightning, but it isn't. It is just lightning. Um, it, it, it's one of those words like definitely that's um, or hypocrite or hypocrisy uh, uh, that's often misspelt. Anyway, um, yeah. So now we're turning to twenty nine. While riding down one of the last hills before the lake, you notice a rusted iron box lying at the base of a tree. If you wish to open the box, turn to 205. If you would rather press on towards the lake, turn to 339. Okay, we're going to open the box and turn to 205. Here we are, good, thought I was a missing page then for a second. You force the box open by breaking the hinges with your sword. There is nothing inside except for a small clay doll. If you wish to take the doll, turn to 299. If you would rather ride on without it, turn to 339. Okay, we're going to take the doll and turn to 299. Whoops. Oh, shocker. Okay, by touching the clay doll, um yeah by touching the clay doll you trigger a magical reaction the doll starts to grow and soon towers above you uh, the clay appearing soft and malleable as though just dug out of the ground uh, the hulking monster steps awkwardly towards you its club-like fists raised to attack the clay golem stands between you and your horse and you have no option but to fight it. Clay Golem, skill 8, stamina 9. Your sword is a poor weapon with which to fight a clay golem. After each attack round, roll 1 die. If you roll 1 at any time, turn to 393. If you roll 2 to 6, continue the combat. If you win, turn to 362. Okay, there's the clay golem. Oh, and there's our horse behind it. Surely we can just go between its legs. Anyway, um, yeah, I have it on good authority. That if we do roll a one, guess what happens? We die instantly. So that's nice. Anyway, eight, nine, off we go. So after each attack round, you have to roll roll a single die. It's interesting how this is in Livingstone book, but it doesn't say roll a dice. It says roll a die, which is the correct thing. Anyway, clay golem. Skill eight, stamina nine. Okay, my skill is now 12. But... Um, if we roll after each attack round, we roll a one. Um, we are pretty much instantly dead. So eight plus off we go. Eight plus seven is fifteen. I get uh, twenty because my skill is now twelve. Okay, so fifteen to twenty. Um, put some down to seven. And we have to roll a die. So let's do that. Okay, no. So we're not dead. Good. Okay, so 8 plus 3 is 11. And then we get um, 18. So 11 to 18. Ian Livingstone really does punish the player. I mean, what is the point of doing that instant death? At least just take off like an extra stamina uh, point or just lose a couple of skill points or something like that. Not kill me instantly. Anyway, um, anyway, so we have to roll another, another die, don't we? Nope. Okay, so 8 plus 3 is 11. I get 23. So 11 to 23. Down to three. Okay, and we have to roll another single die. Nope. Okay. Um, eight plus nine is 17. I get 19. 17 to 19. Um, that puts it down to one, but I have to roll another die. Nope. Okay. And then, whoops, finally, I hope, um, 
8 plus 8 is 16, I get 22. So 16 to 22. So that's the end of Mr. Clay Golem. Do I still have to do the the thing after each attack round? Yep, yeah, doesn't say if I haven't killed it or not. So I have to do another attack round. Nope, still haven't um, still haven't gotten a 1. So that's that. That's the end of Mr. Clay Golem. And I managed to get out of that without dying. That's amazing. Anyway, if you roll it, if you roll two, if you roll two to six, continue the combat. If you win, turn to three hundred and sixty-two. Okay, off we go. Three hundred and sixty-two. Um, the golem rocks on its feet for a moment and then crashes to the ground like a falling tree. Its head splits open, and inside you see a gold ring set with a large jewel plugged into the clay if you wish to put the ring on your finger and turn to 102 sorry if you wish to put the ring on your finger turn to 102 if you'd rather leave it where it is and ride on towards the lake turn to 339 okay just need to see something quickly oh 393 i thought it was 339 i was, I was, I was yeah I, I was thinking to myself um i've done the wrong thing or something Anyway, um, if you wish to put the ring on your finger, turn to 102. If you'd rather leave it where it is and ride on towards the lake, turn to 339. Okay, we're going to put the ring on our finger and turn to 102. There is a strange iridescence given off by the jewel, but you are unable to trigger off any magical power. You shrug your shoulders in disappointment and ride off towards the lake. Turn to 339. Okay, so we have a gold ring with a large jewel. So it might come in handy later. Let's make some more of these while I'm at it. There we go. All right. Um, gold ring with a large jewel. There we go. Okay, so we're turning to 339. Off we go. And we will read this in the next video. So I will type down that I'm on paragraph 339. Unread. There we go. And I shall... Um, leave it at that so thanks very much for watching um i hope you can join me for the next time we were very close to dying uh, twice um first time we were on our last um stamina point with the griffin and that clay golem was very precarious with the with the single die roll um very difficult book this as i said anyway thanks for watching at least our skill is up to up to 12 again anyway um thanks for watching and goodbye